My name is Sam. I am a test pilot and the lead designer of the Gravity Jet Suit. And essentially, that is a system that augments the human body with the most minimal amount of equipment possible and allows them to fly. I've been very fortunate over the last few years to iterate this design with the team at Gravity and along the way actually learn to fly. You can see on the right there, this is our jet suit design that we've flown all over the world in recent years. And on the left is the electric prototype jet suit that we've been experimenting with recently, showing what is possible with current battery technology. And the answer is a very short flight time with a very heavy suit that weighs almost as much as me, whereas the jet suit can fly for a much longer period of time and is much lighter. Over the years, like I mentioned, we have iterated this design. So Gravity was founded by Richard Browning uh, about four or five years ago when he first wanted to experiment with what it is like to put propulsion on the human body, because attaching a jet engine to yourself traditionally sounds like a bad idea. So it turns out it's not actually trying to rip your arm off. It's actually just a soft, spongy push on the end of, on the end of your arm. And that allows you to stabilize yourself in a way that you wouldn't normally have been able to do. If I'm falling over this way, then I can simply put my hand out and rectify that fall. And you can see that first suit was designed and built from DIY store type aluminium. Anything you can get from the hardware store, it's just got a load of holes drilled in it. And what that allows is you to iterate this design really, really quickly with what you have available to you. Test loads of different configurations and see what works. So when I got involved in the early days, I was working on rocket engines. So 3D printed rocket engines with organic internal structures and cooling channels because 3D printing allows you to have all of these internal structures in one part. So you can create a very complex design that is very easy to assemble. So when I got involved with gravity, I applied that same thinking to the jet suit. What we started with was trying to join loads of pieces of aluminium together with 3D printed joiners. But really, that doesn't make much sense, and it just you've got just as many parts to connect every time you assemble one of these. So I thought, why don't we 3D print the entire suit? So we started experimenting with 3D printed panels. We call those dragon scales along the side. These would flex in and out as the fuel is used in the suit. But these were applied to the metal structure of the suit, of the original Mark I, as we call it. This was the official first Mark II. So you can see there's a polymer structure sitting under there. And what it's actually doing is ingesting air from the environment around, around you as a pilot. And it's passing some of that air through the structure of the suit to keep it cool, because there is a jet engine running in there before that air is ingested into the turbine and ejected out the bottom, providing thrust. That worked after some iterating and some jiggery-pokery. So then I moved on to the arm mount design. So this, you can see in the center, is a nylon arm tube, because that can be lightweight. It's not under a lot of heat load. And the turbine housing around the sides is 3D printed aluminum. And this is possibly the most minimalist design of arm mount that we've actually created over the years. It's very lightweight and uses barely any material. And to explain how the jet suit actually works, you've got two of these arm mounts on and one backpack, all three of those providing one of three tripod legs of thrust. So if you were to put both your arms in front of you, you'll go backwards, put them both behind you, you'll go forwards. And that creates this very stable curtain of thrust that keeps you in the air and allows you to control yourself by moving your arms. From there, we went to the second iteration of this Mark II, which tries a different dragon scale design down the side and just further refines that suit into something that is nice and compact. And we flew that at events all over the world. Then, this still being an iteration of the Mark II, you can see we moved away from those dragon scale type scales on the outer side for one large 3D printed part. And that means, one, that it's much easier to assemble. You're not poking pins through all of these shells every time you assemble it. And also that it's much more robust. One of the key features with the suit is we use it in quite intense situations. So when we're doing an event, it gets battered around a lot. When we're doing demonstrations with special forces or search and rescue, they get battered. So you really need to make this as robust a design as possible. And that came to fruition with what we call the Mark 2.5, very interesting naming convention, I know, which is the most robust one that we've used for most of our military events. So the, the ideal material for this would be something like a car tire. 
you can throw it out the back of a plane, it hits the ground and bounces, and it's still a car tire. So we moved from 3D printing this in nylon to polypropylene, which is much more flexible and much more shock resistant. So we had a jet suit um, that we really had flown all around the world. So what do you do with that? Well, one of the things is training. So we actually allow people to come and put the suit on and learn to fly. Uh, we keep them on a safety tether system so that they're constantly safer than it would be to just walk around because you can't fall over. So people have had a lot of fun coming and learning to fly with that. Um, we even trained Adam Savage from Mythbusters, who was one of my heroes growing up, because that was a show about building things, iterating things, blowing them up, and just testing and having fun. So I was very fortunate to meet him when we clad the suit in a 3D printed titanium Iron Man armor. So that was a special moment for me, meeting him and actually training him to fly. So what else have we done with it? Well, this is where we've flown the suit from boat to boat in various uh, military situations that shows how you could board a ship, which is usually involving getting off the big ship that you're on, then going onto a smaller ship, which has had to berth with the big ship, going across to the other ship, and then berthing with that one and getting up off the ship onto that one. Or you could just fly. So what usually takes a few minutes to get from one boat to another, we just did in about 17 seconds. Another thing we've been doing is demoing the search and rescue capability, where what would usually take 25 minutes to hike up a mountain to service a, uh, a person that has injured themselves, that 25 minute hike took 90 seconds. So with the suit, you can get up a mountain very quickly and you're able to provide stabilization to a medical patient before the rest of the team has to come up and can actually carry them down. But it just means you can reach that person that much faster. So with all of these demos, we've shown how the suit works at events and demonstrations all around the world. However, the story I'd like to tell today is a more personal story about how I got into doing any of this in the first place and what inspired me into flight and engineering. And it started with films. Particularly, Back to the Future was one of them. These are drawings from when I was about nine of the Back to the Future car, which is still one of my favorite designs of Thing, as it is many others. I really liked Back to the Future. <laughs> that is my 10th birthday cake made for me by my mum, uh, which on the same birthday, my grandparents, who live in South Africa, gave me this little toy DeLorean. So that was one of the key objects in my childhood that really depicted, depicted flight in such a different way in a film to how we usually imagine it, which is something zooting along in the sky at high speed, usually quite far away. In this film, flight was depicted as something that hovers in front of you, and there is something really magical about something hovering. It's just suspended in the air, and it usually comes along with some massive rumble of the amount of energy needed to actually keep it there. It's just throwing enough air downwards to stay up in the air in front of you. And the way it was depicted in these films was just magical to me. So I did the age 10 equivalent of research, which is do a load of drawings, scour the internet for plans of you know, magical ion-powered hoverboard inventions that couldn't really work, and design my own, you know, which have lots of lightning bolts on them, which is what you do when you're 10. I also was very fortunate at one of the air shows that we've done um, to meet a DeLorean enthusiast. And you can see it quite literally looks like I've wet myself. <laughs> I promise that wasn't me. But DeLorean enthusiasts often know a lot of other DeLorean enthusiasts. And this one happened to know one with the Back to the Future DeLorean. So I hatched a plan to recreate one of those scenes from one of my favorite films when I was younger. And that first test involved zip tying a hoverboard to my boots and trying it on our safety tether training system at one of our old test facilities with the support of my colleagues. Back to the future and proceed. Oh, it's uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually... <laughs>
Let's not, let's, let's not help him. Let's just watch. <laughs> not very glamorous at first, but this was the shot we got on that day. I was quite happy with that. The way you see those pads on the bottom of the board as it swings around the corner was just a stark reminder from the film. So I'm going to show you it again from a different angle because I love that shot so much. Your legs are very important when landing the jet suit. If I was to be pushed over now, I'd stumble and correct myself because you're very adept at restabilizing yourself after being pushed because of these things. They are quite important when landing a jet suit. You're tremendously nimble and you're able to weave between different obstacles and land on an area the size of the napkin. But if you decide for some reason to strap both of your legs to a rigid object with zip ties, it makes it slightly harder to land. So. The plan was to try and get the most compelling and cinematic shot I possibly could of this hoverboard flying to fulfill a bit of a childhood dream. First things first is you tell your grandparents back in South Africa what you're going to do. This is me explaining how it's actually going to work and I'm going to try and fly alongside the car. <laughs> they were very supportive. So what we did is we rigged up a discovery with two happy camera people in the back and we, and we were to drive backwards down the runway, backwards because we needed the camera to pivot round at a certain angle, using one of these, which is a gimbal camera stabilizer. Essentially, when you throw the camera around like this by those two handles, it stays level. The, there's another picture of the gimbal, which what we added to this was actually an anamorphic lens. And what an anamorphic lens does is it creates these amazing Star Trek-like lens flares, which look beautiful when you shine the sun directly into it and move it around. And that's just one of those cinematic things you get from those old Star Trek, well, recent Star Trek movies. We did a simulated run on an electric one wheel where we, did, we tested all of the timings with the cars moving around, because we had about three cars going down the runway at once with other people filming on their phones on other electric skateboards. So we were ready. We had a Back to the Future DeLorean. We had a camera rigged up car in the middle of a runway during sunset. What also happened is when one DeLorean enthusiast turns up, multiple often follow. So we ended up with three DeLoreans, one of them a Back to the Future one, and a very happy picture, uh, happy moment for me, uh, getting to see all of these cars that I'd love so much. One day I'll get one. They also come with a lot of paraphernalia and uh, props. So I found myself, after having staple, stapled Velcro to the bottom of my boots, to attach myself to the board, which would allow me, in one of those landing events, to actually rip my feet off if something went wrong. They also came out with the jacket, that very unflattering hat, and the almanac, which is another prop from the film, which they shoved in my back pocket, and subsequently took from my back pocket and ran away afterwards because they wanted to keep it. So I was ready to go. That was a pretty cool collection of things from my childhood. The actual car, the actual hoverboard, some boots with flashy lights on them, and a silly hat. So this was the shot we managed to get on that day.
So, <laughs> that shot down the runway with the heat haze you can see emanating from the engines and everything there with those beautiful lens flares was fantastic. I was very happy with the result. But where the shot ended is not where my flight ended. I still had to land. So you can see here, Alex, uh, a colleague at Gravity, who's also one of the key engineers on designing all of the electronics within the suit, is helping me start the engines up before the flight. We did two takes in the end. The first take, I did a kind of slidey landing, which you'll see now. But I managed to get my foot off just in time and stabilize myself. However, the second landing, with being a bit more tired after the first one, didn't go so well. I could have just stayed up in the air and used more thrust, but my brain was somewhere between flying and landing, so it was slightly more of a trip over. Looks worse than it was. And I landed on that little toy DeLorean that my grandparents had given me when I was 10, which was sat in my back pocket. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. I think this is a wrap. Yeah. That is a wrap. Yep, that is a wrap. So there we go. This was the team that made that possible. Loads of people came together and drove down a runway for a silly stunt, really. Uh, but it's taking something that does have practical application, the gravity jet suit that we've demoed in military situations, search and rescue situations, humanitarian situations, and just doing something that hopefully is very inspiring with it and at least satisfied some desires from when I was 10. Part of what I'd like you to take away from this, if you do anything, is I've tried as hard as we can in the design of this suit to make it mirror props from a film. It does quite a cool thing, which is enable a human to fly without losing that human silhouette that you have when someone stands in front of another. It still looks like a person staring back at you when they hover in front of you. And those things in films that, are, that I found the most interesting are those props where, whether it's something that some bond gadget that he ends up using they always deploy in a very beautiful and cinematic way he the way someone would interface with those and use the handles and deploy them like the iron man suit deploying over the entire body it's designed to just look extremely tactical and work in any situation and that's what we've tried to do with this is add all of those little details as if it was a film prop not going too far in the way of just having useless details but things that actually make it look like it could be from a film and it actually works. There are a few things that come from film into the real world and aren't a bit disappointing. When a flying suit, when this flying suit comes into the real world, it actually spits fire from the engines as you start up. There's this rocket engine like rumble that pummels your chest when it hovers in front of you and it makes that beautiful bah noise as everything starts up and does the opposite when you stop. There are so few things like that that just aren't disappointing when brought into the real world. So I feel it's kind of an obligation to at least try and make it look cool. That's our most recent last generation, well, our last generation arm mount, and you can see we've put as much effort into that looking cool as we possibly can. However, this will be the first time that we've actually shown the new suit which we've been working on, and that's taking all of the learnings from the last few years and putting them into something that hopefully looks like it could be a bit film prop-like, but also turns it into something like using a consumer drone. A consumer drone is something where you can quickly hot swap batteries or like a camera or anything that you use a lot. It's very tactical in the way you use it and it's very intuitive to use. So that's what we've taken all of those learnings towards with this next suit, which has quick deployable batteries and as many things as we can possibly do to make it easy to use. And that's what we're calling the light suit. I've gone for a very clinical, stark white and black design um, from one of my favorite films, which is a, uh, called Oblivion, one of the Tom Cruise ones. And a designer, Daniel Simon, did lots of design in that film, which I absolutely love. This is probably not as good as him, but you know, worth a try. So in that far left, far right picture, that is a Buzz Lightyear that my grandfather made for me when he couldn't find a Christmas present. So I got Soup Can Lightyear that Christmas. <laughs> The middle one is a costume my mum helped me make for a book day, really, my mum made most of it, where I'm Caractacus Potts from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And on the far left is the jet suit that I built with the team at Gravity. This whole journey of being able to be involved in this type of crazy project was spurred on by design from film, specifically Buzz Lightyear, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Back to the Future. So 
anyone who works in design or prop design, please keep coming up with these crazy ideas that we then have to work 10 years later to bring into reality. And if you're a designer, do try and add those details that just make it that much more satisfying and tactical to use. Thank you very much.